Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Lipsick High School, where tonight the homestanding Vikings welcome in the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Mark Shine and our entire WSN crew. And Mark, we got a terrific game tonight. You look at both squads and scoring is not a problem. Both of them <laughs> averaging right at 35 points a yeah, game. Yeah, Columbus Grove, they're both at 35 if you want to look at it that way, Danny. And they both kind of do it somewhat similar ways. They both run the football very, very well. Columbus Grove, 229 yards a game on the ground. Lipsick at 241 yards per game on the ground. They will test both teams' defenses tonight. And you take a look at star power. We've got it all oh over boy. the field tonight for Columbus Grove. Trenton Barraza, maybe, maybe the best back in Northwest Ohio. And on the other side of the field, you've got Quinn Schrader, maybe the best player in yeah, Northwest and Ohio. Certainly, <laughs> at, when it comes to pure athletic skills, Quinn Schrader's in that mark. Trenton Barraza, 642 rushing yards on the season. He's run a punt back for a TD. He's got uh, seven and a half yards per ru rush average. Schrader, he just does everything for his team. And we're about ready to get a kickoff here on uh, what is a beautiful night, Danny. 69 degrees. It'll be about 64, 65 when we wrap this one up. It is a wonderful night for high school football. Yeah, the last, uh, the last uh, oh, Friday man. night, September of the year. We're heading into October. Our presenting sponsor tonight is the Union Bank. The Union Bank is committed to you. Union Bank is our presenting sponsor. So number 99, Tyler Walther will get it underway here and kick off. The Bulldogs will take the ball first. And uh, let's settle in for a good one, partner. Zach Reynolds and Trenton Barraza back to receive this. And both of those guys, they are what you call dangerous. Yeah, they're home run hitters. You're there absolutely you right, Mark. So we are just about underway. And Thank you for joining WSN's broadcast of tonight's game between the Lipsick Vikings and the Grove Bulldogs, and we are underway. A little squib kick, and it Look goes out. off at number Look 10. Oh, and, oh my goodness. That ball went off of Bo Bern Bernesser, and uh, Lipsick almost recovered, but, uh, you know, turn it into something, Mark, wow. because they got some decent field position. Well, Tyler Walter kind of mishit the ball. He was kicking it very well in the pregame, but that time he mishit it a bit, and I think it surprised the up-back Bernesser, and, he was able to hop on it, but not before a couple of Vikings were pressuring him. They do get it at the 36 yard, 31 yard line. So the Bulldogs will be led on the field by number two, the six foot, 145 pound junior, Landon Best, 51 of 74 for 559 yards, 10 touchdowns, and most importantly, Mark, he's only thrown one interception this year. He doesn't make mistakes with the football, and he's got obviously a, a good line in front of him, helps protect him and make that running game go. So here come the dogs. They've got two to the right, one to the left. Burnesser in the gun. He'll hand the ball off to Barraza off the right side, and he is taken down and hit immediately by number 25, Mike Jimenez, the 5'11". Linebacker just comes up and fills the gap. Well, the interesting thing, we talked about offensive numbers, but defensively on the ground, Lipsick gives up just 122 rushing yards per game, too, and we saw that right there with that single-yard loss. So that'll bring up second and 11 with a one yard, one, excuse me, one yard loss. 11.28 to go. We're scoreless here on the board. Landon Best is in the gun. He'll take the snap, and he'll go with a Trenton Barraza off the left side and gets a little bit of a hole and makes up for it with about a four-yard gain. Pulled both guards and took him to the left side of the formation. He gets a lot of that back up to the, uh, what, the 36. Going to make him a manageable, I think, third and five. They bring him third and five from the 36-yard line. Huge crowd tonight, Mark. Oh, the home fans really filled up for this one, and the visitors bring a lot. You know, Columbus Grove travels well wherever they go. They've got a great program over there. And it is homecoming, and Lipsick brought their folks out tonight, yes, too. Yes, they did. So here comes Best in the gun. He's got Barraza in the back. And Barraza, and he gets a hole. And there goes Barraza up the middle as he goes across the 35 to the 30, to the 25, and taken down right around the 15-yard line. There you see the home run ability of Trenton Barraza. Broke that right off the right side of the formation and then just outdistanced the, the linebackers. Had to make a play. They're going to come go quickly here. Yeah, they're going quickly to the no huddle. So here come the dogs, a big-time first down there. And they'll hand the ball up to the first man, off to the left side. And a gain of about a yard, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. The ball was handed to number two, Landon Best, as he kept it himself. Danny, they ran that one so quick, they never set the markers on the <laughs> right. far side. The chain gang wasn't <laughs> right. prepared for it. Our first down sponsor tonight is Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick. For all your commercial and residential concrete needs, Dale's Concrete is our first down sponsor. A little bit of hurry up there by the they dogs. They really did. <laughs> like I say, they got that going before the chain gang was was set. Now, that one went from the 21 to the 17. So the second 10 from the 17. Best is in the gun. He's got a man in motion. He's going to hand the ball back to Trenton Barraza off the left side. And he goes up the middle for a gain of about six yards. Another nice run from Trenton Barraza. Well, he better not get tired because he's carried the football every play <laughs> so far. And he... 
He's pushed it down close to a first down. Yeah, there you see the offensive prowess of Trenton Barraza. When he gets that ball, he is the threat every time. That'll bring up third and two from the nine-yard line, 9.40 to go. Best is in the gun. He's got Barraza off to the left, and he's got two to the right. He looks across the sidelines, wait for instructions from the coaching staff. He goes back into the gun. Barraza takes the snap. Excuse me, Barraza gets the handoff. He goes off to the right side. Wiggles away uh, around a few guys, and he takes the loss there about the, I'll say about the eight-yard line. He got away from Mike Jimenez in the backfield, and they're going to give him the first they're down. They're going to give him the first yep. down, yeah. It didn't look like he had it there, but he did get across the line. That will bring up first and goal from the seven-yard line. So the Columbus Grove Bulldogs knocking at the door to score twice here. Excuse me, score first. I said score twice. You can't score twice. Landon Best is in the gun. He'll go Barraza again up the middle. There goes Trenton Barraza for a gain of about two to three yards. Stop made there in the middle by number 19, Trent Seifker for the Vikings. Uh, yeah, you talked about that earlier, Mark. Against the run, they're really stingy, Lipsy kids, giving up 122 yards a game. But you look at the Grove Bulldogs defensively. <laughs> yeah. They, they also uh, pretty stingy when it comes to rush defense. This is their first flag of the night. Going to say a false start from the Columbus Grove lineman. That's a big penalty when you get down into this area of the field. Now you're going to look at second and eight. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. So we'll go second and eight. Excuse me, second and goal from the eight. 8.28 to go. Still scoreless on the board. Here's Best in the gun. He's got Barraza off to the right. He's got trips to the right. They'll go left side to Barraza. He's got a hole. He gets towards the goal line, and he just about gets in, but he's knocked down right around the goal line. Boy, Mark, if you don't hit him against oh, well, the line of scrimmage, he can really hurt you. He has uh, that big combination, Danny. He's fast. He's shifty, but he's also got power. And he, he put that thing, it was on the one-yard line is what the scoreboard said. He's closer than that. You know, Mark, and this he's I'm not comparing him to Robert Smith, but he's got that high style where he's mm. straight up, and he really has nice strides. He is a really good back. So here comes Best. He's going to keep it himself. Did he get in? Let's see if he did. He did. Touchdown. Excuse me. Touchdown, Grove. So the Columbus Grove Bulldogs score first as they take a 6-0 lead with 7.44 to go. Well, understanding he's a team player, Baraz is going to go, hey, nice run, but I got you down here. Man, can I carry <laughs> into the end zone? But Best just picked his way behind the left side of the formation, and they got a chance now to go up 7-0. And a nice drive by the Bulldogs. They'll try to tack on the extra point. This is Evan Vierhoff, a 5'7", 115-pound sophomore. Yeah, movement up front again. There comes another flag from our crew tonight. Make this a little bit more difficult, unless there was lipstick movement that caused it. Well, one thing they do a pretty good job of at Grove, other than most <laughs> sports they have, they have developed some really good kickers in the last that few years. That is an absolute <laughs> fact. Yes, they have. <laughs> yep, we're going to back really it up have. a little bit. This will be uh, a little bit of a challenge here. Danny Holbrook, Mark Shine from Lipsick High School. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs have scored first on Lipsick's homecoming night. There's the snap. There's the hold. The kick is up, and it is going to – Oh, it <laughs> just it. got across got the bar. Yeah. <laughs> so with 7.44 to go in the first quarter, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs lead the Lipsick Vikings 7 to nothing. You're watching high school football on WLS. Welcome back to Lipsy High School. We're at 7.44 to go. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs strike first. And Mark uh, kept it on the ground for oh the whole boy. drive. Today. Every play, nine rushing plays, all obviously on the ground. Nine plays, four minutes and 16 seconds off the clock to go 69 yards. Touchdown run by Landon Best, and they're up 7-0. And let's see if the Vikings can hold serve. So there's the kick right down the middle of the field. He picked up on the left side. 
brought up to about the 30-yard line, and that's where the Vikings will take over. Lipsy comes on the field 6-0, undefeated on the season, 3-0 in the Northwest Conference, averaging 35 a game. Defensively, they give up 10.5 a game. They will be led onto the field by number 13 quarterback Ty Lommers. The 6254 pound junior is 34 of 57 for 569 yards and six touchdowns, and he is the field general for this team, Mark. He is for a fact. Now, he's got a lot of weapons, and he, he uses them all. They've got good running backs. Uh, he's got good wide outs, good athletes. got a good line up in front of him and they are a diversified group of people. So there's Lommers in the gun. He's got Esteban Carrillo in the backfield with him. They'll go off the left side, and my goodness, that was a quick hitter. You saw Quinn Schrader, and now you know why yes, he's sir. such a valuable athlete. He's responsible for 14 touchdowns this year, Mark. Kind of came off the, the right side of the formation, a little bit of counter action, and took the ball to the left side, and as you said, Janny, when, when he catches the, <laughs> the football in his hands, he can move with well, it. Well, you know, they hand the ball off him. It looked yeah. like somebody fast-forwarded the whole play because <laughs> he just took off like a rocket. So here come the Vikings, second and four from the 36. Lommers is in the gun. They hand the ball off up to the first man. This is, uh, I believe, it's Carrillo on the carry, and he'll go up for about two yards. Esteban Carrillo is the leading rusher for this team. 412 yards, six touchdowns. And that's part of what makes them so good, Danny, because they have so many different weapons. You know, you can't say, let's take this guy away or let's take this option yeah. away because they've got so many things that Coach Kirkendall can go to. He does a really good job with this program. Yeah. We've been over here several years, and he just does a fantastic job with this program. So here come the Vikings, third and one from the 39-yard line. Lommers is in the gun. High snap. He bobbles it. He's Pitches it off to the left side. Here comes Schrader as he's going to pick up a first down. That's another Dale's concrete first down. Could have been disaster, Mark, but he yeah. made something out of nothing. It does. And, and the wide out on this side wanted to get a block in, but he realized if he did, he was going to get called for a clip and just let him go and come more or less screened off the Columbus Grove guy. But once again, you can see the speed as he got to the edge and picked up five and a first down. And I really find it interesting how they use Quinn Schrader. They'll, wide, they'll line him up wide. They'll line him in the backfield. They put him in the slot. He is a dimensional tool there. Five rushing touchdowns on the season. Eight passing touchdowns on the season. Ran a kickoff back. There's Lommers in the gun. He's going to throw off the left side. He's got Schrader out there. They're screening for him. He'll pick up about four yards on the play. Actually, when he first caught the ball, I thought, this is dangerous. He's out there in space, but Grove closed to him quickly enough that he got to just the four yards to the 48. Well, I can promise you this, Mark. Andy Coles and that Columbus uh, Grove defense has spent a lot of time this week knowing where Quinn, Quinn Schrader is. That'll bring up second and five from the 49. 5.42 to go. Grove leads seven to nothing here on homecoming night on a beautiful fall uh, evening. Congratulations to Queen Samantha Hazleton Absolutely. tonight. Here's Lommers in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off. Gain of about two yards. That's Estevan Carrillo, the first man through. And that'll bring up a third and four from midfield at the 50-yard line. Columbus Grove gives up just 73 and a half yards per game on the ground. And they will be tested by this Lipsick Viking offense tonight. Well, this Grove defense, Mark, they have given up zero points in the last two games. Yep. <laughs> so through uh, nine quarters right now, they have held their opponent scoreless. Here's Lommers throwing the ball off to the left side. He's got a man out there, and they'll pick up another Dales concrete first down. And that completion was made to Trent Siefger, the six foot, 168 pound senior. Makes the catch, and he goes across the line for another Dales Concrete first down. Riley Souter got him by the legs and just tripped him up a bit, or he might have had more yardage than just that right there, kind of a diving at the legs type thing, and knocked his pins out from underneath him, but a first down Vikings. You know, Mark, this Vikings offense, they go a lot of side to side. They're, you're not seeing them throw the ball down the middle a lot, so just dink and dunk, but very, very effective. Here's Lommers. He'll swing the ball back. They'll try to go to the left side, and they get a hole, and it goes about a pickup of nine yards. And that's Trent Seifker again, that little pitch pass to the backside, and he picks up nine to make it second and one. Good leg strength. He ran through the tackle in the backfield of Kyle a lot later up and got it down to the, what, the 38, Danny? About the 37, 38-yard yeah. line, yeah. 37, let's call it. Yeah. Well, I'm just going off the scoreboard. I'm not arguing with you, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> They're saying 37. You're saying 38. I'm well, confused. Let's, uh, let's go with the scoreboard. They're always right. <laughs> 3.53 to go. Second yeah. second from 
from the 37-yard line. Here comes Lommers in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off to Carrillo, and he goes right up the gut for another Dales Concrete first down. There you saw Estevan Carrillo find the gap, and he picks up another first down. Good burst of speed from him too, Danny. You know, pick up that first down right there. They do that little dive play action, and he got to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Well, the, I said this. Uh, my, my wife always asked me when I leave the, for the game, what time do you think you'd be home? And I said, uh, look, <laughs> these are the kind of games that are really quick. These two teams are going to gr ground and pound, and they don't throw the ball a lot, but uh, really effective in what they do. Except you got to think about overtime when these guys <laughs> right, play. You that's know right. I mean? But that's they, right. this will be a very closely played that's game. Right. Here Here's comes Carrillo off the left side. Oh, He's got a hole. He picks up about nine wow. yards. Estevan Carrillo, there you see the speed of that young man. And we talk a lot about Trenton Barraza, but Estevan Carrillo takes a back seat to no one in the Northwest Conference. Yeah, he got a nice first down that time down to the, to the uh, what, uh, 24? Yeah, about the 24 yeah, yard line. 24. First Picked up 10. just exactly 10, I guess. Two pass completions, seven runs. Got uh, th four first downs on this drive already. Yeah, we have first and 10 from about the 30, or excuse me, the 24 yard line. So here comes Lommers in the gun. He's got Krill off to his right and he's got trips to the right. He's gonna throw to the right. This is Quinn Schrader with the reception. He goes across the 20 to the 15 and that's where he'll be taken down. He's hit first by number nine for the Bulldogs and that is Trevon Baxter. Sophomore, 5'11", 160 pound defensive back. It's almost like a long handoff, Danny, when they get the ball out there, but they get it out to them in space. Yeah, those are safe passes, and they're in yep. space. You're absolutely right. You want to put your athletes in the best position to succeed, get them in space. Grove actually blitzed on that play, but he got rid of the ball before he could, the blitzer could get to him. Here comes Esteban Carrillo off the right side, and he goes to about the 10-yard line, and he is hit there by number 11, Landon Houston for the Bulldogs. Makes the tackle there. Yet another first down, Danny. 2-12 to go here in the first quarter. Grove leads 7-0, but Lipsick knocking on the door to try to tie this one up. Danny Holbrook, Mark Schein from Lipsick High School on homecoming night 2023. Here comes Lommers in the gun. He's got Schrader in the slot. He's got a man in motion. The ball's Oof. fumbled on the ground, and it's picked up by Grove. And a big turnover in a game of this magnitude. Yes. Exactly what the Bulldogs needed to happen there. Kyle Lathrop, the 5'9 senior, Johnny on the spot. A little bit of problem at the mesh point, and the ball popped loose. And as you said, there's that defensive end to hop on the football, and Grove holds. Yeah, we don't talk about that a lot, Mark, but in a game like this, those turnovers are huge, especially when you're Lipsick and you have such a great drive happening right in front of you. Yeah, what was it? Each team had, what, four turnovers right. or something right. you know, for the season coming into the night? That's a huge one. So here come the Bulldogs as they get their second chance on the offensive side. Landon Best brings his troops out. He's got Trenton Barraza off to his left. He's got trips to the left. He's going to go Barraza to the right side, and he is hit there and taken down immediately at the line of scrimmage. We can sort out the numbers there. We'll tell you who made that tackle. Number 25 for the Vikings, Mike Jimenez. And we've called his name a few times tonight. Picked up a couple. Good stop, though. You, if you're our Lipsick, you would like to get a stop and force a punt in this particular situation, get the ball back somewhere in the midfield area. That'll bring up second and eight from the 17. Best is in the gun. He takes the snap. He'll go hand off to Barraza. No, he'll keep it himself. Boy, that confused me, Mark. He kept <laughs> it himself. That was a really nice fake. It was. And you said it's a good time to run. That's the play that ran on the goal line uh, a moment ago that scored the touchdown. And it was kind of a man-on-man -man blocking, and you let Best make a decision. He kept it himself that time. That'll bring up the first third and long situation tonight for the Bulldogs at third and six of the 19. And, and here's what you're talking about, Mark. Yep. This is a position for Lipsick. If they can stop him here, they'll get a nice position on the punt. So here's Best in the gun. He's got Braz off to his right, and he looks across the field. He's going to step up in the pocket. He throws across the middle. He's got a man wide open. And, oh, and he missed the reception. Number five, Zane Steckshorty had it in his hands. There was no one around him. I have yeah. no idea how he got that wide open. He, he went <laughs> down the middle of the field. He delayed a bit coming out of his, his pattern and got wide open down the middle of the field. Somebody missed him as he came out of, out of the formation. But he went up in the air and just wasn't able to reel it in a little bit as he came down a bit off balance. And now we're going to see our first punt. And you saw, I, I really liked how Landon Best stepped up in the pocket, yeah, Mark. Did a did. nice job of avoiding the rush. And Lipsick defense held. So here's number 36, Dylan Mertz, the punter for Grove. 
as he gets one up into the air. Low line oh, drive, a punt. nice punt as it goes across the 30 to the almost the 26 yard line. So what a great job by the Columbus Grove team of fl basically flipping the field, Mark. They did. In fact, it looked like the you know, Vikings are going to get the ball somewhere near midfield. Instead, with just the 32 seconds left here in the first quarter, you're going to get way back on your own 26. That's, uh, help me out, Danny, 31 and 24. <laughs> it's like 55 yards. It's off. like 55 yards. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the math Danny, hour here on WC. My, my good friend Dan Allison used to coach at Shawnee in some uh, other places. Yep. yep, Danny says if you don't catch a punt in the air, it costs you 15 <laughs> yards. That's about what happened right there. That's right. You're right. Dan Allison, a good man oh, in the uh, Fellowship of Christian yes, Athletes. Sir. Worked a lot of hours with him, and he's a good man. So here come the Vikings, first and 10 from the 27-yard line. As he looks across the field, and he avoids the rush, goes off to the left side, and he's got a wow. hole. He's got a Look lot out. of grass in front of him. Here comes Ty Lammers as he goes across the 50, and a, a big-time run of about 35 yards, Mark. Absolutely. He wanted to force the ball downfield to number four, Quinn Schrader, but Schrader was covered up, and so he tucked it down, started to roll left, and then cut back to the middle of the field, got a first down to 50-yard line. I think once he realized the defensive backs were all yeah. following the receivers, he knew he had a lot of grass to go. I think we're going to let this one run the quarter out here with the uh, Grove Bulldogs up, and each team had the football <laughs> twice in the quarter, and Lipsick <laughs> <laughs> they got shortchanged a little bit on that one when the time ran out. And that'll do it after one quarter from Lipsing High School. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs lead 7 0. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Lipsing High School, where quarter number two is beginning. Our beginning sponsor tonight is the Union Bank. The Union Bank is committed to you. So, Mark, We've seen a little bit of everything. We've seen some passing, some running, some quarterback runs, and, and a turnover. Yeah, a turnover, and now Lipsick with that run right there, they're ready to get themselves back in business here as we start the second 12 minutes. So here comes Schrader. He'll take the ball from Lommers, uh, picks up about three yards, and there you see Quinn Schrader. They line him up in the slot. They line him up in the backfield. They line him up wide. He is a five-tool player. You, you just got to account for him in every play. You know, wh where is he right now? and make sure you, you have a, a body uh, assigned to him. I've watched him a lot of years. It uh -huh. seems like he's been over here for 15 uh, years, that's and true. he's played a lot of football for this team, and that's what you want is experience on the field. So here's Lommers. As he'll hand the ball. No, he's keeping himself. As he goes to the left, he's going to pitch back to Schrader. And a nice job defensively there. You saw number six for the Bulldogs, Zach Reynolds, come up and really lay the wood to Quinn Schrader. Str strung it out the way you're supposed to. You have a man assigned to the quarterback to make sure he doesn't get loose. He did pick up about three or so on the, uh, on the pitch play, but good job defensively. It's going to bring up third and five from the 45. Clock continues to run at 11.23 here. Grove leads 7 to nothing. Danny Hulick, Mark Shine from Lipsick High School. Here comes Lommers. He's in the gun. He's got Estevan Carrilla to the right. He's got two receivers to the right, two receivers to the left. He'll take the snap and looks across the field. He's going to throw wide out to Carrilla. Carrilla catches it. He's going to try to get to the first down marker, which he – Oh, Whoa. he is hit hard by number 21, Mark Grant Never Eversall. Saw. Did he lay it to him? And I don't think he, he got he a short? first down. No, I believe he, he is short. Th that looked like Danny had first down written all over. Got a little swing pass. It was a blitz up the middle that they picked up. Got a swing pass to get away from that. And now we have a first decision to be made by Coach Kirkendall. Oh, my goodness. That might be the hit of the night, Mark Grant Eversall saw come out of the defensive back position and just really laid one to Quinn Schrader. So they're going to go for it, Mark. Fourth and one from the 41. See if they go behind big number 99, Tyler Walther. They'll go wildcat with Schrader as he goes yeah. to the left. He's going to throw it. He throws oh, deep down out. the left side. He's got a man out there. And a nice job by number six. Zach Reynolds makes a heck of a play stopping the pass. That was an incredible call, I thought, Danny. You know, you're looking at fourth and one from the 41, and you roll out, and you think you got, okay, I'm just going to sweep for that first down. But the defensive back, and that's, in that particular case, Reynolds had it played perfectly. He did. Knocked the ball away. But that's a good play on both teams. Really nice job. And, you know, when Quinn Schrader catches the ball, everybody in the stadium thinks he's going to carry it himself. And for him to throw that, I really like that play call. So Lipsick's drives have been stopped by a fumble and then an incompleted pass on fourth down. Grove takes over. So 10-28 to go here in the second quarter. Grove leads 7-0. 
They'll go shotgun, throw it down the left side. They've got a man out there, and it's just over the outstretched arms. There you saw Landon Best. Target was Kyle Hopkins, six-foot junior. Tavius Benzerano was out there with him, running stride for side. He was in a good position defensively. Mark, take a good shot, though, right? You've been running the ball a lot on first down. Loosen them up a little yeah. bit with that shot downfield. I, I am just so impressed with both of the teams, their athleticism. We've oh. got some really good kids out here tonight. So here comes Landon Best in the gun. He's got Barraza off to his left. He's got two to the left and one to the right. He's going to go hit Trenton Barraza right at the middle. He's got a hole, and he goes to the V in the middle of the field, and he gets up to the 50-yard line, and that'll bring up a manageable third and about two yards. He found that spot right there on the right side of the formation over right guard, right tackle, and got the ball to the 49. They're going to need a couple. Ten minutes to go here until halftime. <coughs> Excuse me. thought we had an eclipse. The lights went out. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> I was wondering what happened there. Here comes Landon Best in the gun. He's going to pitch back to Barraza. Barraza goes off the left side, and he's going to pick up a Dale's Concrete first down. Nice job by Trenton Barraza, knowing where the sticks were, and he gets there for another Dale's Concrete first down. The time he goes off the left side of the formation, he's carried the ball. Let's see, eight, nine. He's had 11 carries already here. We still got nine and a half to go. <laughs> I don't think they're going to slow yeah. him down much anymore. They're going to keep feeding that young man the ball. So here come the Bulldogs, landing best in the gun. He's got two receivers to his right, and he's got both tailbacks flanked off to his left and right, and he's going to keep it himself, and he's going to be hit first there. And a nice job by 77 for the Vikings. That is Quinn Westhoven, 6'3", 204-pound defensive end, comes up and really makes a nice play. That was. I thought it looked more space for him to run than there was, uh, apparently, because I thought he was going to pick up some more yardage in that little option play. Fake the ball inside. You know, Mark, both of these teams have really tackled well in space yes, tonight. That's you, correct. you can tell yeah. they're both well coached. So here's Landon Best. He's got Trenton Braza off to his left. He's got two receivers to the left, one to the right. <laughs> I'm sorry, Danny, but Braza says, hey, Coach is calling a play. <laughs> so let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Look over here, will you? Best looks across the field. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to roll his light. He goes up the middle, and he's going to be taken down for a about yeah. a five-yard loss. Grant David had him in his sights first. He got past David, and David still hung with it, still came back and made the play and forced a three-yard loss on the sack. And there you saw the discipline defense of the Vikings yeah. as the defensive end stayed home as he came to the right and then rolled back to the left, and they make a terrific play and a three-yard loss, and that'll put him at third and 13, so the first big third down for Columbus Grove tonight. 8.07 to go here in the second quarter. Dogs lead 7-0, and we're going to get a timeout. Lipsy Vikings will take a timeout. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. Watching high school football on WOSN. Coach Joe Kirkendall saw something he didn't like, Mark. He calls a timeout with 8.03 to go, and the dogs are driving at 30-13. It's kind of an interesting call of what he saw at that particular time and what he wants to do defensively right here. He's going just three down line, but see if he brings the blitzers off of this. So here's Best in the gun. He's going to motion for Barraza go off to the right side. He's going to throw down the middle, and he's got a man oh. wide open in a nice pitch and catch to number seven, Brady Basinger. And that, my friends, is how you pick up a third and 13. Run that seam route right down the middle. What a pass. And defended reasonably well. A couple of defenders there. He was able to go up and snag it, take it to the 39, and pick up that first down. And both these offenses have, excuse me, both these offenses have used the middle of the field to their advantages tonight. So that'll bring up first and 10 from the 34, another Dale's concrete first down. I like those big tight ends running those Absolutely, seam routes. Absolutely, I, I sure like do. That. Best will take the snap and give it to Barraza, and Barraza will be met at the front of the line. Gain of maybe a yard. You can see they kind of faked the jet sweep to Zach Reynolds and handed it off to Barraza going the other way with it. He picked up, what, a yard or so? Yeah, Trenton Barraza has been the workhorse this half, and I believe that's his 13th carry. Is that Something correct, Something like Martin? that, yeah. yeah I, 13th, 14th. Take your shoes off so I can count up the number of carries. <laughs> you take a look at each of these teams' schedule. And uh, they've, got, they've got some heavy hitters coming yeah. their way. <laughs> the last of 
three out of the last four weeks in this conference, everybody plays, the top teams play each other, so. Here's Best as he rolls to his right and he fires the ball off to the right side. He's got a man out there and he avoids a tackle and he's hit hard, <laughs> hit hard at about the 25 yard line. And that's number one, Kyle Hopkins. And boy, yeah. Kyle Hopkins is gonna think twice about running that yeah, route. That was Quinn <laughs> Schrader just came over and just lowered his shoulder and, and ran into him. Well, you know, Quinn yeah. takes a lot he's, of hits in offense, correct. so he gets to deliver a few on defense. Picked up eight. Look at the long yard here. We can it hear that hit all the way up here, Mark. <laughs> Probably four down territory for Coach Schaefer. Bring up third and two from the 26. Landon Best is in the gun. He's got Braza off to the left. Two to the left, one to the right. He's got a man in motion. He's going to pitch the ball back to Barraza, and he's going to go across and pick up another Dales concrete first down. That play has been effective. They've yes, ran it they three have. times tonight, and they've picked up a first down on each one. A little toss sweep to the left side of the formation, try to get outside that defensive end, and they do so down to the 20. And this will be the 10th play of the drive coming up, Danny. And I'm sure that and the, uh, you know, Andy Schaefer, uh, I'm sure, Part of the game plan is to keep the ball out of Lipsick's well, hands. And, and Grove uh, has had it for four and a half yeah, minutes in this yeah. driver alone. So here comes Best. He's got Barraza off to his left. He's got two receivers to the right. He'll take the snap. He's going to throw to the right side. He's got Hopkins out there. He's got a blocker out there. He goes across Whoa. the 10 and taken down out of bounds at about the seven-yard line there. You saw Kyle Hopkins. And Kyle's made another reception. As he pushes that ball towards the goal line with 5.40 to go. First and 10, another Dales concrete first down. Tried to jump over the defensive back out there, Ben Gennaro. Maybe picked up an extra yard or two. Here we are, first and goal. 11th play. That'll bring up first and goal from the seven. Best is in the gun. He's got Barraza off to his left. Kyle Hopkins in the slot. He's going to keep it himself, go up the middle, and he's going to pick up an easy touchdown. There you saw Landon Best just part the C and run right through the end zone for another Grove touchdown, and it'll make it 13 to nothing with 5.21 to go. You talked about that toss sweep. They were running to Barraza, and he faked it that time, took the linebacker out with him, and that opened up the, as you said, opened up the Red Sea and got him <laughs> into the end zone. So they'll try to tack on the extra point to make it 14 to nothing. Second touchdown run for Best. Here comes Evan Vierhoff, kicks it up, and it is good. With 5.21 to go here at Lipson High School on homecoming night, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs have come to town and taken a 14 and up and lead. We'll have more high school football right after these messages. Welcome back to Lipsing High School where the Columbus Grove Bulldogs have taken 14 to nothing lead. And uh, they did a little bit of everything, Mark, on that drive. Yes, Running, passing, uh, quarterback, keepers, just about everything. That goes the ball down the middle of the field, picked up at the 15 yard line. And he gets a block. This is Trent Seeger, and he takes it across the 40 yard line. So a nice return for that young man. We've called his name quite a few times. And he gets the Lipsing Vikings in great field position. Yeah, that's just exactly what they needed right there. They, they need to jumpstart their offense right here. They will get the football back with the Lipsing Vikings to start half number two. So if they can put together a good that's drive a here, point. put yep. some points on the board, get the ball back to start half number two, and they're right back in the football game. But that's a great point. This, this drive right here, important drive, I think, for the Vikings. And the Vikings not used to being down at halftime. <laughs> yeah. So here comes the Vikings at first and 10 from the 40-yard line. This is Lommers, looks across the field. He throws deep down the right side, and he's got a man out there, and that's going to get a flag yeah. as he was hit by two Columbus Grove defenders. And, Danny, uh, that, that did not easy. get a flag. That got three flags yeah, because say. that was uh, <laughs> that was pretty obvious. You know, he was going up in the air. They tried to jam him at the line of scrimmage, and he beat the jam at the line of scrimmage and was kind of running down the field. I think everybody in the white jersey knew where the pass was going. They just got there early and made contact. Lommers' intended target was to Jace Breck, the 6'3". 156-pound junior. And Chase, yeah, he's got 12 catches on the year for 240 yards and a score. And he's a big target. He's Six a big three. target. Yes, Absolutely. he is. And, he, and you saw him running down the sidelines. He had the man beat. He just got knocked down before the ball got there. So that'll bring up first and 10 for the 45-yard line. Lommers is in the gun. He's got Estevan Carrillo to his right. He's got trips to the right and a single receiver to the left. He's going to keep it himself looking for blocks. He gets a block from Schrader as he tries to go across the line of scrimmage. He'll pick up about three yards. 
And that's one of those situations you will take any yard you can get because it looked like they had him in the backfield. He was able to dance away from a couple of guys and push it down to about the 42 or 43 yard line. And there you saw Quinn Schrader from his wide receiver position out there blocking. And boy, that makes yeah. you valuable when you oh. do that. <laughs> Clock continues to run at 4.37 to go here until halftime. Second and eight from the 43-yard line. Lommers is in the gun. He's got Schrader in the slot and Carrillo off to his left. He's going to give the ball to Schrader as he goes up the middle. And he finds a hole. And there he goes. Quinn Schrader up the middle. And he's going to put it in the end zone for a Lipsick touchdown. Boy, howdy. Let me tell you, that young man is quick. The Lipsick Schrader. <laughs> yes, he did, Danny. He broke the line of scrimmage, and it was just turn the Jets on and take off a 41-yard touchdown run. And you called it, Mark. That is exactly what the Lipsick Vikings needed as they get back in this game with 4.20 to go. And there you saw the athleticism of Quinn Schrader as he breaks it for a Lipsick Viking touchdown. They'll make it 14-6 to as they try to tack on the extra point. Boy, this is fun, yeah, partner. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. And they left Columbus Grove 4.20, though. <laughs> You're right. But, I mean, you take the points when you can get them and – Here's a PAT by Quinn Schrader. Quinn Schrader. <laughs> yes, he does it all, and he knocks it through. So with 4.20 to go, we're getting close here, partner. 14 to 7. We'll have more high school football right after these messages. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we help you. So the scoreboard lighting up here for the Lipsy Vikings as they get their first touchdown tonight to make it 14 to 7. You saw Quinn Schrader, you saw yeah. him go up the middle, and then Mark, he kicks the extra point. That's a 59-yard <laughs> drive in 59 seconds. Now, that's pretty good. They'll that's take that good. every time. Yeah. And Zombie Nation's back on the PA. That kind of got him going there. <laughs> Offensively, let's see what happens here. And there's another squib kick down to the 40-yard line. Uh, Picked up by the up man for Columbus Grove, number 67, Leighton Blankenmeyer, the 6'2 junior, corrals the ball, and that's where the Bulldogs will take over. So, Mark, with 4'18 yeah. to go, quite a bit of time oh, for the is. Bulldogs. And they have all three of their timeouts remaining, and they have moved the football throughout the game. They've had to punt once. In fact, to show you how effective both offenses have been, each team has uh, lipstick has not punted yet in the football game. Grove just that one time. So 4'18 to go here until halftime. It'll make it first and 10 from the 39-yard line. As Landon Best brings the dogs out, I'll try to put more points on the scoreboard. He's got Barraza directly behind him. He's got a man in motion. He's going to swing the ball back to Barraza off the left side, looks for a hole, and he'll pick up maybe a yard, maybe a yard and a half, but a nice job by the Lipsing defense. And there you saw Estevan Carrillo come up from his linebacker position and make yeah. the play in the hole. Tried to get a crack back block on from the outside by a, a wide out on the far side, but Carrillo was able to play through it. Got just over the 40. That'll bring up second and eight. Set a yard and a half. They're going to call it two yards. Make it second and eight from the 41. You know, conversely, Danny, this is kind of an important drive for Columbus Grove. Since Lipsy gets the football first to open up half number two. Absolutely. So here's Best in the gun. He's got a man in motion. He's going to go, uh, excuse me, they're going to go Barraza as he tries to go across the line of scrimmage. And he's in immediately. And there's Estevan Carrillo again. So a little bit of gamesmanship between Trent and Barraza and Estevan Carrillo as they're battling it out. They're, they're going to give the football to Reynolds at some point on that jet yeah, sweep. Right now, they've right. been faking it to him and giving it to Carrillo going, or to Barraza going back the other way. And at some point, they're going to hand the football off to number six. That'll bring up third and eight from the 41. So a big time play here for the Lipsick defense if they can get the ball back. Tight end again. Best looks across the middle. He's under heavy Didn't pressure. Time. Yep. He's going to be taken down. And he tries to get the ball out. They're going to say that's a sack uh, yep. as he was down. They're going to call it down. And that'll bring out the punting unit for the Bulldogs. They did try to run that. They ran number seven, Brady Basinger, down that seam route again, just like they did a little while ago. But because of the defensive pressure, didn't have time to get the football to him. Good job, Lipsick, to hold. And, Boy, now they are in a good spot, Danny. Yeah, the momentum has really shifted in this game market. The yeah. first quarter and a half was all Columbus Grove. And here the last four or five minutes, Lipsick has taken advantage. And look who's back deep. There's that Schrader back there on the right side. And Trent Seifker, both of them home run hitters. 
There's the low line, line yeah. yeah. Schrader's going to field it at FD 25. He's at the 30. He's to the 35. He's got blockers out there. Mark, he's on the left side to the 50. Here he goes, and he goes out of bounds. And a late hit. Oh, yeah. They're going to call that every time. Number 63 for the Bulldogs, Ty Meyer. Just a mistake by that young man as he knocks him out of bounds, and that will tack on 15. That was a good punt. It was a 40-yard yeah. punt, but he just made a really nice run. He got a couple of good blocks and got a 25-yard return to midfield, and then uh, the penalty is going to be tacked on on top of that, as you can see our head official today, Carl Schlegel. Going to make that call. He got it back to the 29, plus you're going to tack on 15 plus that. And Mark, they got 2.26 to yeah. go. Plenty of time for the Leipzig Vikings. They, they have used a single timeout, but plenty of time and just in two timeouts remaining. And it's just amazing the pressure that he puts on defense as Quinn Schrader is so quick and shifty. He does a great job of getting in those seams and uh, takes advantage of it. And they're going to get a, a drive that will start on the Grove 35-yard line with 2.26. So here's Lommers in the gun. He's got one receiver to the far right, Trent Seifer in motion. They're going to hand up to the first man through, and that is number two, Mason Raider, as that's his first carry of the night. They've got all kinds of weapons, Mark. As soon as yeah. you think they're going to go to Carrilla, maybe not. Maybe Schrader, maybe not. And then they bring in Mason Raider. So lots of offensive weapons for the Lipsy Vikings. Well, Danny, you talk about Uncle Mo. If they score here and tie it up, oh and goodness. they get the football first in, in half number two, they, they uh, change this whole they, game they Absolutely. Got to bring up second and seven from the 32. Lommers takes the snap. He'll go Esteban Carrillo off the left side. And a really nice job by number 57 for the Bulldogs, Landon Ockmoody, the 5'8", 185-pound linebacker. Does a great job of really meeting him at the line of scrimmage and wrapping him up by the ankles. He did. Looked like there was a little bit of room to run that time as he was headed back to the left side of the formation. You know, I talked to Andy Coles a lot about this Bulldog defense, and they, they graduated some really good linebackers, oh, yeah. but these guys are doing a nice job of bringing up that legacy. So here's Lommers in the gun. He'll throw to the right. He's got Schrader out oh, there and immediately play. hit by number three, Trenton Barraza, and a great job of hitting him directly after the throw. He played through the block, and the blocker got called for a hold. He did. And still got through the block <laughs> and made the play on that. And I, I would assume they're going to take the penalty because Lipsick is in four down territory. Back him up again and make it uh, third and a long way. Otherwise, it's going to be fourth and about seven. So let's see how, let's see how they play yeah, this, Coach yeah. chooses to play it. Do you want it third and what, uh, 15 or so, or do you want to make it fourth and seven? And they're going to go talk to Coach yeah. Schaefer. I'll tell you what. I I'd be tempted to go fourth and seven. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to give him an extra play. I, you know, that may be a good way to look yeah. at it, Danny. That's, uh, that's why those coaches get paid that big money. That's right. You that's know, why to we're make up that in decision. The <laughs> yeah. But I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll, well, we'll comment you. on it. <laughs> my, some of my favorite people in the whole wide world, Danny, your coaches. Absolutely. There's not a one of them does it because there's money involved. No, you're you right. You know, you do it because you love the sport. You, you love the young men or young women to get to coach. Yeah. They're going to take the whole penalty and decline and it. And decline yep. it. Yep. So, and bring up fourth and seven. The tackle was on about, what, the 35? Yes. So, they were going yep. to lose three anyway. And back it up. It's going to be fourth and ten now. And we're approaching a minute to go. So, here come the Vikings. Fourth and ten from the 32-yard line. Clock continues to run. We're at the minute mark here until halftime. Play clock is already down to seven. They're going to have to hurry. Lommers is in the gun. He's got two to the left, two to the right. Carrillo in the backfield. Lommers looks across the field. He's going to throw to the left side, and he's got a man out there. And, oh, my goodness, and it, they're not going to call a catch on that. And you want to talk about a hit. Number nine for the Bulldogs, Trevin Baxter. Wow, Mark, you want to talk about a defensive play. That's exactly how you that, do it. That's what you do. You play that free safety spot, and that guy comes across the middle, and uh, as he goes to make the catch, and – Remember, that's Schrader right there who's got great hands, and he just tomahawked him with well, the – Well, he ran a really right, nice pattern. He, he was wide open. It was the hit that knocked the ball out, knocked so out. credit yes, The ball was Trevin. on the money. Yeah, exactly, it was. Credit to Trevin Baxter on a nice defensive play for the Bulldogs. And that brings up first and ten from the 35. And let's see what the Bulldogs do here, Mark, if they try to put some more points on the board. They have all three timeouts left. And as you said, they got a couple home run hitters too. Here comes Landon Best. He takes the snap. 
He's going to look across the middle. He's under heavy pressure, rolls off to the right, and he's got a man out there, and he just misses intended target number eight. That was Devin Geckel. Clock best, stops. That's just pretty elusive back there, isn't he it? Is. They've he got really him is. a couple of times today with good defensive pressure, but he rolled away from that one and made a, a pass that only one of his guys could get a hand on. Well, the thing I've noticed about these two teams, they're really evenly matched, and the difference in the game is the turnover right now. So here's Landon Best in the gun. He's got two to the left, two to the right. He's going to take the snap, looks across the field. He steps up in the pocket, and he's going to keep it himself. He goes across the line of scrimmage, and he's going to pick up another Dale's Concrete first down, but that one's coming back because I'm thinking yeah. they're going to get a holding call. Looks that way, doesn't it? Sure does. Well, anytime you see one of the, the left tackle holding his hands in the air, <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> I yeah. didn't do that, Coach. Right. I didn't do that, Coach. <laughs> you know, those offensive linemen have had a really nice game today for both teams. Let's go through Groves right now. As Kalen Mays is the left tackle. Left guard is Kyle Lathrop. The center is Ty Meyer. Loundon Akmudi is the right guard. Ethan Johnson's the right tackle. We mentioned the tight end, Brady Basinger. And actually, it's been a pretty cleanly played half. It really has. It really has. And that's going to back them up uh, another 10 yards, Mark. So let's. That, that took about uh, to eight seconds off the clock as well, with now 33 left. So that'll bring up, let's see where they spot the ball at here. About the 27, maybe? Yeah, it looks about the 27 yard line. We make it second and 18. 33 seconds to go. Landon Best is in the gun. He's got two receivers off to his left and two receivers to his right. He's going to take the snap. He looks across the field under heavy pressure. He's going to roll to the left, and he is going to be taken down, and that is another loss there. A great job by the Lipsick Viking defense. And there we've got a, looks like a stoppage in play. It looks like, uh, is Columbus Grove going to take the I would think out? so. Let's see what the call is. They're going to 24 say, seconds to go. Bring up second and 18. Excuse me, third and 18 from the 27-yard line. So, Mark, if we take a look yep. at each of these teams, the Columbus Grove started the year out with a loss to Pandora, 22-25 in a rivalry game. Yep. They get a big win over Liberty Benton. They lose to Patrick Henry. But the last two weeks, boy, they've really played well with a 40 to nothing shutout of Spencerville and a 49 nothing win over Devil Shepard. Now they really have it. You go, hey, they lost to Pandora early. In the yeah, but you know what? Pandora Gilboa beat Macomb. Pandora's really and good. And they're yeah. really good. So that, that was not what you would say. That's not a bad loss, I guess, is the way that we like to phrase that. And we take a look at the Lipsy Vikings. Oh. First win, 25-19 over Lake. They come back, they beat Van Buren, they beat yep. Pandora, they beat Allen East, yep. and then they really take care of business with Ada and Spencerville. So and oh, the, tonight we have Crestview and Bluffton oh, playing in Bluffton. And these four teams all match up here towards the end of the season. Third and 18 from the 27. Landon Best is in the gun. He's got a man in motion. He's going to keep it himself and run right up the middle as he tries to get back to the original line of scrimmage and almost picks up another first down with a gain of about 16 yards, Mark. And they're going to take a timeout. They're just short of the first down. They get 17-yard pickup. And, and the clock continues to run, so it does. it's down to 10 seconds. Uh, are they going to let that one run out? Has that look to it? Yep, they are, and that's exactly what they're going to do. And that'll do it for the first half of action here from Lipsy High School. So after one half of play, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs lead the Lipsy Vikings 14 to seven. When we come back, we'll have second half action right here. Welcome back for second half action here from Lipsy High School. Danny Hobart, Mark Shine, the Lipsy Vikings, and the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. 14 to 7 after one half. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs lead. And Mark, we got all kinds of stats here for the first half. Well, we want to thank Ned Stecksholdy, the official stat guy from the NWC, for giving us our stats this evening. Talk about an even game, Danny. Time of possession, Lipsy 12 28, Columbus Grove 11 32. Grove has rushed it for 113, so is Lipsy. Grove has uh, completed three of six, has landed best for 36 yards. That gives them a total of 149 yards. The leading rusher in the ball game is Trenton Barraza. He's had uh, 14 carries for 96 yards. On the other side, Lipsick, uh, they've rushed it for 113. Their quarterback, Tyler Lammers, is five of seven, but just for 19 yards, 132 total yards for them. 
Schrader is their leading ball carrier. Quinn is at five carries for 59 yards. And <laughs> it's 14-7, Danny, and it's every bit that close. Absolutely. Our presenting sponsor tonight is the Union Bank. Union Bank is committed to you. Union Bank is the presenting sponsor. And, Mark, we talk about those uh, even stats, and the difference in the ball game right now is the turnover it that is. Columbus Grove picked up and capitalized on. There was only one turnover in the first half, and we, we spoke about it earlier. Each team had just four turnovers on the entire season through their first six games. The only turnover was when Lipsick was driving, yes. a chance to tie the game at seven. They had a fumble, and Grove recovered it. That stopped the drive, and we are a drive short for Lipsick, although they do get the football first here in half number two. We are pleased to announce new pricing for the WSN streaming service for only $8 per month. You can watch WSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wsn.tv, also available on Roku and Apple TV. So we've got people all over the world watching oh, yeah. this, Mark. You know, the other thing we talked about, the opening half, Danny, there are going to be some tired and sore young men yes, when they try to get out of bed tomorrow morning because there have been some flat-out collisions in this game. Well, some of these young men are going to homecoming tomorrow night, so they got to get their dancing <laughs> shoes on. <laughs> uh, so. You know what? girlfriend, I think I'm going to set this one out. <laughs> I'm going to take a long hot shower and just kind of relax. Uh, <laughs> All right. Boy, so. Look how they're cra clouding, crowding up front, expecting to kick off for Brady Basinger to not go deep. So the Bulldogs will kick off here first in the second half, and we are underway for half number two. Lipsing Vikings will take the ball at the 25-yard line, yeah. and they find a seam, and they go up the middle, and they go across midfield, and a nice return there by Mason Raider, number two. We called his name earlier tonight, but he does a nice job of bringing him up. Uh, just exactly the what that was almost like a quick hitter, yeah, you know, and you know, when you're trying to break the line of scrimmage on a dive play, he got the ball and just jetted through the first line of defenders and took the ball to the 48-yard line. So that's where the Lipsing Vikings will start out. They knew what they were doing, too. They they, they played up and caught that short kickoff, and off they went. Ty Lommers will come out and bring the Vikings out. He'll have Esteban Carrillo behind him. Solid opening half for him. Five of seven. Hit those swing passes really well. They'll have a man in motion. They'll swing it back to Trent Seifker, and Seifker's going to oh. be taken down. And a nice play there by number 62 for the Bulldogs. And that is Ty, or excuse me, Kyle Lathrop. Got a little dark here in the Yeah, it got a little lot dark. It's <laughs> back to, to what had happened. We're going to have to put the old lights up. I was thinking the same thing. That's what cell phones are for, aren't they? Absolutely. Although that's a four yard loss. Back to their own 48, so good opening defensive stand for Grove. That'll bring up second and 15 from the 48. Dogs lead 14 to 7 here. Opening minutes of the second half. Ty Lommers is in the gun. Carrillo off to his right. Two receivers to the left, two receivers to the right. He'll take the snap. He'll throw across the right side. And he's got a man out there, and he just overshoots. Let's see, number 28 for the Vikings. And that is Colin Neese, the 5'10 freshman. A little bit of a go route right up to the sideline. The safety was trying to get there in time to help out, but the ball was just thrown, overthrown a bit. So now they'll go back to third and 14 right away. Grove making some changes, bringing some speed in. Had the wrong number there. Jacob Shekelhoff was the intended target, number 20. Here comes Lommers in the gun. He's got trips to the right. And he looks across the field. He's going to throw to the left side. And he's got a man out. Oh. Finds Seifker. And Seifker's going to take it for another Dale's concrete first down. So there you saw the pitch and catch between Ty Lommers and Seifker. Right in the seam of the zone before the linebacker could get there to knock it down. Really nice pass and well orchestrated play. First down. Our first down sponsor tonight is Dale's Concrete and Decker Stamping in Lipsick. For all your commercial and residential concrete needs, Dale's Concrete is our first down sponsor. Danny Holbrook, Mark Shine from Lipsick High School, homecoming 2023. Lipsick trying to get this one tied here in the second half, down 14 to 7, 10 43 to go. Seifker goes in motion. They'll go Estevan Carrillo off the left side, and he'll be taken down for a gain of about a yard. And Estevan Carrillo, Mark, was the yeah. workhorse in the first half for the Vikings. He was. They came hard at him that time off the right side of the formation. Never really gave him a chance to get started. That's kind of what you got to do, get him before he gets his wheels going. That'll bring up second and eight from the 34. 10-18 to go. Clock continues to run. Lommers is in the gun. He's got Carrillo and Schrader in the slot position. He's going to swing the ball back to Schrader. Schrader goes across the middle, and he's going to be hit immediately by number 15 from Columbus, or 57, excuse me, Loudon Akmudi, the 5'8 senior. 
comes up from his linebacker yeah, position. They're going to be a couple yards short, though, Danny, here in four-down territory. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. And this is the uh, part of the yeah. field where you, you really can't punt the ball because you're too short. Well, you can't kick it. <laughs> it. It's still third down, but uh, this is one of those situations if you can't pick up a couple right, right here, you know you're going to go for it. So that'll bring up third and two from the 28. There goes Seifker off to the right side. He's flanked on the right by number five, Yanni Guerin. Lommers is in the gun. He's going to fake the ball. He's going to keep it himself, and he is going to be taken down for a loss. Second big play of this possession for number 62, Kyle Lathrop. Kyle Lathrop having the game of his life right now in the last three plays. Yes, he has. A couple of big plays right there for him. That's going to make this a difficult fourth down. Got to make it fourth and five from the 31, and we were looking at a two-yard game, Mark, and now they've <laughs> yes. pushed it back. So not an e easy play to make here. Yeah, lost about three on that one. They need to get to the 26-yard line, so it's a, about a five-yard pickup here. Here's Lommers in the gun. Weapons Lommers has. He's got Schrader off to the far right. Estevan Carrillo is off to his right shoulder. He's going to take the snap, look across the middle, step up in the pocket. He's oh. going to keep it himself, and he's going to pick up the first down. And a nice job by Ty Lommers of picking up about 12 yards and a Dale's concrete first down. Yeah, really good job. He looked deep. The, the linebackers had dropped deep. The safeties were in good position. He just tucked it himself and got that first down. Mark, you just wonder if that was a called play and everything else was just fluff. Yeah. Could be. <laughs> Could be. Could be that quarterback draw situation. Run everybody deep and then go up the middle. So a nice play by the Vikings to get him in the first down position. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 21. 8.14 to go. Lommers is in the gun. Esteban Carrillo comes through. They'll throw to the right side. They've got Schrader out there, and he is knocked down by Trenton Barraza, and we've seen that a yeah. couple times tonight. He's able to defeat that blocker out there. One time they actually held him, and he still made the play. But that time he came clean through the blocker and just good recognition to get that play. Schrader looks across the field and kind of says, hey, where's the block at out here? That's two times he's been hit really hard by Trenton Barraza. That'll bring up second and 14 from the 25, 7.40 to go. 14 to 7, Columbus Grove continues to lead here in the second half. They've already had the football for four and a half minutes, too. Lommers will bring him to the line of scrimmage. He's got Esteban Carrillo to his left. He gets the snap, looks across the field. He's under heavy pressure, and he's going to hey, be taken down. Oh, my goodness. Kyle Lathrop, Mark, just everywhere on this drive. He blew that one up, just came right up the middle, got the sack. And just, right now, He Mark, is really yeah. playing. Lipsy doesn't have an answer yeah. for Kyle Lathrop. Going to have to get a couple guys after him now. That'll bring him third and 21, so a big-time third down from the 32. And Lipsy going backwards on this drive after a really nice first couple of plays to push the ball down across midfield. Need to get to what, about the 16? No, the 11 for the first down. So here comes Lommers. He's got Esteban Carrillo to his right. He's got two receivers to the right, two to the left. He's going to take the snap. He looks left, throws left. He gets find the receiver yeah. out there, and it's going to be way short of the first down. The intended target, number three, Jace Brecht, as he goes up for a gain of about four yards, and that will bring up a big-time fourth down. Tried to run one of those jailbreak screens that time and couldn't make it happen. Grove reacted to it very well. They did get the ball inside the 30. Andy Coles' defense is doing a really nice job here, Mark, of keeping them at bay, that'll bring up fourth and 17, ball in the 28. So here come the Vikings trying to pick up 17 yards. Lommers is in the gun. He's got trips to the right. He's got Seifker off to the left. He takes the snap, looks across the field. He goes across the middle, almost picked off, and that'll be a turnover on down. So thrown into double coverage there. Yeah. Looked like he had him for a second, but the ball was late. And it'll go back to Columbus Grove on down. A little bit of pressure up front, and then Grove dropping back, people back, and they had that snuffed out well. And although they possessed the football for six minutes and eight seconds, nothing to show for it for Lipsick. And Mark Kyle Lathrop was instrumental in pushing back uh, oh, Lipsick on that drive. He and number 52, Kylan Mays, they were very good defensively right there. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 28. This will be Columbus Grove's first possession of the second half. Landon Best in the gun. He's got Trenton Barraza off to his left. Reynolds is in the motion. This will be Barraza off the left side. He gets a nice 
hole, and he'll gain of about six yards. So there you see Trent Barraza as he continues his assault on the yards tonight. The same play they've run multiple times. They run Zach Reynolds back across the formation. He's going to run the jet sweep left. Nope, give it to Barraza instead. He goes right with the football and picks up about six. I thought at first when Zach Reynolds went in motion, they uh, keep doing that sweep yeah. where they're going to hand it to him, and they did not it, do it that time. It's going to happen at some point. <laughs> right, it is. So here comes Landon Best in the gun. Trent Braz off to his left, two to the left, two to the right. He takes the snap. He fakes the pitch back. He's going to keep it himself. Runs across to about the 39-yard line where he will be close to a first down. We'll see where they mark it. Official on our side says he's got it. The official does say he's got yeah. it, and the chains are moving. So that, and Landon Best is down. He is holding his knee. So we're going to let the trainers come out. We'll take the time out. Let's see if we can help that way. Watch high school football. School and Landon Best, the quarterback for the Bulldogs, was down on the play. But great news as he jogs off the field. Mark, it looks like he's going to be back in just a play or two. Well, you would think so. It looked really serious when he first went down. Now they're going to go a little wildcat stuff with Barraza <laughs> in there. Not, not a bad option. Yeah, that's pretty good. Isn't it? <laughs> so Barraza, he's running on the yeah. sidelines pretty hard. Yes, he is. is. Best. Barraza's in the wildcat formation as he waits for the snap. He'll take the direct snap. He's going to keep it himself. It's a nice block on the left, or excuse me, the right side, and he picks up about two yards, and here comes Landon Best back yeah. in the game. They pulled two people from the left side of the formation, brought him across, and tried to free up Barraza. Got him a little bit of a crease and picked up about three. I'm sure Trent Barraza says to Landon Best, you, you, you do this a little better than me, so <laughs> just keep handing me the ball. And every once in a while, you may throw it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Second seven yeah. for the 42, 4.31 to go. Clock continues to run. Grove leads 14 to 7 here in the third quarter. A couple pretty good juniors to have on your team, aren't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. <laughs> there goes Reynolds in motion. They're going to fake the handoff. They'll yeah. go Trenton Barraza off the left side. And if he gets on the boundary, he's yep. got all kinds of speed. There goes Trenton Barraza, and he picks up another Dale's concrete first down. You saw him explosiveness when he gets around that left side. I thought we saw a flag in there. I guess we did not. Must My uh, eyesight went bad on me that time. I thought something flew in there, but he got the ball to midfield. Give him an eight-yard pickup and a first down. So the eyesight's the first to go. Is no. that what you're saying, Mark? <laughs> hey, that, don't tell you what, Danny. There's a whole bunch of things that have gone, my man. <laughs> you lobbed it up, Mark. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> if we weren't friends, you'd probably punch me. So. No. Uh, the truth sometimes hurts, my man. Father time is undefeated. That's right. First and 10 for the 50 with 345 uh, to go. Best takes the snap. He's going to keep well, it Well, there you go. And he goes across the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard, but a nice job by number seven there for the Vikings. That is Tommy Offenbacher, 6'3", 180-pound junior. And, and you know Coach Schaefer wasn't going to run him if he wasn't 100%. Exactly. So that, that's, yep. that's a good sign right there if you're a Columbus Grove Bulldog fan. You're right. When he went down, he was holding yeah. his leg, and he was really in some pain. So maybe he just took a direct hit to the knee, but he's uh, bounced back, and he looks pretty good now. So that'll bring up second and nine from the 49. He's got trips off to the left. He's got Barraza off to his right. He's looking across the field under heavy pressure. He's going to scramble, rolls to his left, throws it sidearm, and he's got a man out there, oh. and he gets away. This is Reynolds as he goes up the sideline. And look, Mark. Yeah. Best made it an unbelievable oh, throw. Sidearm, almost an underhand Kent to Colby like throw. And that's a reference for you young kids won't know. But well, let's, uh, let's go Mahomes. Yeah, there you go. The there Patrick you go. Mahomes type throw <laughs> and then nice run afterwards. A really nice job of picking up five yards for the Bulldogs. That'll bring up third and five from the 45. Columbus Grove continues to run that clock at 301. Best is in the gun. Barraza off to his right. He's got a single receiver off to his left, and that's Reynolds. Looks across the field. And they are running that play clock all the way down, and that's where Columbus Grove will take the timeout. A little confusion there, so there's a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout. 3 0 to go. Bulldogs lead 14 to 7. Excuse me, Lipson High School, 301 to go. TV44 and WSN, a non-profit organization supported by viewers like you. 
Now is a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTOW.com and click Donate Here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit WTOW.com. So here's Best in the Gun as he looks across the left side, and the catch was made on the far side. They're going to say that's a catch, and an unbelievable catch there by number seven, Brady Basinger. Mark, I didn't think he had a chance yeah, at that Yeah, you know ball. what? The tight ends had a really good night tonight. He had 21 catches for 188 yards and a couple of scores coming into tonight. Actually, I read somebody else's numbers right above Brady. That was <laughs> Reynolds' number. So, Brady will take but it. He's, yeah, he's had, so he's had a good night tonight. That's a first down for him to the 30. That'll bring up another Dale's Concrete first down. Here's Best in the gun. He's going to keep it himself. Hand to go, go Trenton Barraza off the right side, and Barraza sneaks through for a gain of about six yards. And every time you think Trenton Barraza's bottled up, he gets four or five extra yards. I'd like yeah, to know he his was, He actually got after, 10. Yeah, I'd like to know his yards after contact. That would be something uh, interesting to track because you're right. He had about six, and then he, he, you know, using his leg strength and his upper body strength, he was able to pick up that extra four to get the first down to the 20, knocking on the red zone door. Got to bring up first and 10 from the 20-yard line. The road leads 14-7, to seven, trying to tackle on well, some more points here. If they can go up two scores. Lomers hands to Barraza as he goes across the right side, almost sneaks through. And a nice shoestring tackle there by Mason Raider as he saved six right there on the ground. That he did. And that's the type of leg strength that Barraza has shown and might well have broken that. Instead, he gets seven. This will be the tenth play of the drive. Began back on their own 28-yard line. That'll bring up second and three from the 13 with 1.41 to go. This is best in the gun. Barraza's off to his left. He's got two receivers. He's going to fake the pitch and keep it himself as he goes up the middle looking towards the goal line. He goes across the 10-yard line to about the 9. Did he get to the first down and sticks? they're going to say that it is a first down and make it first and goal from the 9-yard line. So with 1.21 to go, clock continues to run. i, I got to believe, Mark, they're going to keep running that play clock down with this drive. I like that play call right there. You I fake the pitch to Barraza and you let your quarterback He'll make a move up the middle behind those offensive linemen we talked about earlier. Well, they've done a great job tonight of keeping that lethal Lipsick offense yeah. off the field. They really have. Something we talked about earlier today on your radio show, Danny, that they led the conference in first downs. And there's Barraza there as he, he pushes is. it towards Whoa. the goal line, and he falls to about the two-yard line. They led the uh, they lead the conference, Northwest Conference, in first downs. And first downs means you're possessing the football and you're keeping your opponents off the field, offensive off the field. Here's Best. He's going to keep it himself as he goes across. Does he get in? Yes, another Columbus Grove touchdown. This one from three yards out. That's his third rushing touchdown of the game. Landon Best, another touchdown to make it 20 to seven as we close the third quarter with 33 seconds to go. 72-yard drive, 12 plays. And they'll take that every time, Mark. So here yeah, comes uh -huh. Evan Vierhoff, the 5'7 sophomore, tries to tackle on the PAT. Snap is back, hold is good, and the kick is up, and it is good. So with 33 seconds to go in the third quarter, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs tack on another touchdown, and they lead the Lipsy Vikings on homecoming 21-7. Lipsing High School with 33 seconds to go here in the to start the fourth quarter. On the stroke, Bulldogs have taken a 21 to 7 lead. And Mark, I would say it's a commanding lead, but with this Lipsing offense, they are a high striking team. That is absolutely true. They, they put 35 on a board each game or on the average, but that was a 12 play drive. They went, uh, what, 72 yards and 519. Columbus Grove did. They had one, two, three, four, five first downs on that drive, too. And a little squib kick. It's going to go out of bounds, and you'll see the flag yeah, fly Kicks out of bounds. And I, I think that was exactly what Andy Schaefer wanted. You, you talk about keeping this big ellipsic offense off the field. You, you had the football for about half the quarter almost. You scored on the end of it. I think that's about as well as Andy would uh, want his team to play in that particular situation. Yeah, nice job of mixing in the pass with the quick hitters. And, uh, boy, they've really kept Lipsick yeah. off balance defensively tonight. So let's see if the Vikings can get back in this one. 
33 seconds ago. Bring up first and 10 from the 35 yard line as Lommers brings the Vikings out to the line of scrimmage. They've got a lot of offensive weapons, does Lipsick. Lommers hands the ball. Double handoff. Double yeah. handoff there. They go Quinn wow. Schrader and they come back. And let's see who that is under the pile. That is Trent Seifker, number 19, as they he gets up a little slow. That, that Columbus Grove defense is disciplined, Mark. They, they just, really are. They, and they hit hard, and they're very, really aggressive. Giving up just 73 and a half yards on the ground per game, a total of 229.7. And that, that'll bring the quarter to an end. And that'll bring the quarter to the end after three quarters of play here from Lipsy High School. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs lead the Lipsy Vikings 21 to 7. We'll get back in fourth quarter action right after these messages. Start of the fourth quarter from Lipsick High School. The sponsor is the Union Bank. The Union Bank is committed to the Union Bank is our presenting sponsor. So here come the Vikings at second and 10 from the 35. Lommers gets the Blitz. snap. They're going to set up a screen oh. pass. They'll go Esteban Carrillo. And the Columbus Grove Bulldogs sniff that one out. A gain of about three yards as they take him out of bounds. Jamison Raider had it snuffed out. He kind of slowed everything up, got past the initial blocker. A couple of his buddies got there to hold it to a three-yard gain. It just seems like the Grove defense is playing faster every possession. I was just getting ready to you know, say. They, like, it, yeah. they've, they've understood the situation offensively and what, what they're seeing, and they're, they're getting to things quicker than they did earlier in the game. And we had commented, we just wondered how fast everybody would be on this, on this grass tonight, and uh, both teams playing at a high speed. Yes, so they are. That'll bring up third and six from the 39. Lommers takes the snap. He's under heavy pressure. He throws to the left side, and that's going to be picked off. Yep. Picked off by Zach Reynolds, and a flag comes down. And let's see what the call is. It's right at the spot of the interception, but a great job by Zach Reynolds of high-pointing the ball. That and he did. Let's see what they're going to call here, if they're going to call a pass interference. He left an area in the zone and went up and picked that one off. I don't think Lommers knew where he was at or understood the break that he was about to make on the football. And the other part of that is that Quinn Schrader got up trying to stretch out what appeared to be a cramp, too. What do we got? They're going to say pass interference. Oh, boy. Columbus Grove. And boy, Mark, I, I didn't see that, but well, that's what they're calling. Well, quite honestly, I was watching the, the INT guy, so I, I'm not sure what kind of contact occurred with the defensive back and the wideout. But that's a big penalty going to be a first down. That is a huge play because that could have really, really put Grove in the driver's seat. But that's going to give... Lipsick's the ball at first and 10 from the 46. Lommers is in the gun. There goes Trent Seifker in motion. They'll go Esteban Carrillo up the middle, and he's hit by a host of Bulldogs for a gain of about three yards. Esteban Carrillo is having to work for his yardage. Yes, he sure is. The clock continues to run. Danny Holbrook, Mark Shine from Lipsick High School on Homecoming 2023. And who again was our homecoming queen, Mark? Uh, yeah, Samantha Hazleton. Samantha Hazleton. Yeah, congratulations, congratulations to her. Mark. Yeah. They're bringing up second and six from well, 42. If Quinn Schrader was limping a moment ago, he carried the football right there. Well, he didn't get much of a game there. Not. Columbus Grove sniffing that one out. And that's going to bring up a big third down from the 42-yard line. A little counter play action. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at HawkerDrywall.com to see how we can help you. Hawker Drywall and Plastering, our scoreboard sponsor. Bring up third and six from the 42. Lommers is going to keep it himself as he rolls to the right. And he pitches back to Schrader, and he does not make the connection. And Schrader slams his fist into the ground. Yeah. He's upset about that call. The pitch was behind him that time as quarterback Lommers uh, faked the handoff inside. They had the edge a little bit, but the pitch was behind him. That takes it back to the 48, and trailing by two scores with 9.45 to go. I think Coach is going to go for it here. I think you're right. Fourth and 12 from the 48, and the clock continues to run. And I'll tell you, Mark, you, you were 100% yeah. right. This Grove defense is really playing fast tonight. So here we go, fourth and 12 from the 48. Lommers is in the gun. He's going to throw off to the left side, up the sidelines. 
And he's, oh, just misses his intended target, number three, Jace Brecht, as he was covered tightly by the Grove defense. Just a go route up the sideline that time. They just threw it up and hoped his teammate could make a play on it. Good defensive play, however, by Columbus Grove, and they will take over. We have not talked a lot, but those defensive backs for Columbus they, Grove have been fantastic tonight. They have been in great position all night long. Sure you know, you talk about the completions, but only for 19 yards in the opening half. That time they had that one played well, and, you know, they just had a, a five-minute-plus drive a moment ago. They do something like that again, they can lock this one up. So you got to believe the Grove Bulldogs with 9.21 to go would like about an eight-and-a-half-minute drive here with a with points on the board. Do you think perhaps Trenton Barraza will see the football on this <laughs> possession? A possibility he yeah. may get the ball like about right. right. To, nope. No, no. Oh, gonna, look at this. They're going to throw run the right ball. side. And they go deep down the sideline, and they did go for Trenton Barraza. No flag thrown in the Grove coaching yeah. staff. Just emphatic, screaming for a call. And the reason I believe they're calling that, or the, the coaching staff is upset, the defensive back never turned he around. He did not turn around. He yeah. was face guarding all the way down the field, and that's why they wanted the call right there. But you were right. Trenton it, Barraza was the intended target. To, to, to throw that home run thing right there. Barraza's going out right now. He spent a little bit of time on the field tonight. <laughs> he deserves a break. Yes, I think we'll give him a break. So Landon Best brings him up. He's got a man behind him. He's got one in the slot, two receivers to the right. They're going to go to the first man up right up the gut for a gain of about three to four yards. That's number 44 on the carry, Josh Gannon for the Bulldogs. That's his first carry of the night, the 5'7", 175-pound junior. Josh has rushed for 283 on the season and has three touchdowns. So he is, it's not like he is a, yeah. someone who's not been in this particular position I before. I don't believe he's had a carry. I could be I wrong, right, but yeah. I don't think he had it. But, yeah, he has a different pace of a back. He's a bruising back there. So they'll bring and, uh, Barraza back yeah, in. Yeah, say number three is back in the game here on third down. You didn't think he was going to stay out long, did you? <laughs> Big play for Lipsick right here. Yes. Third and seven from the 49. Best takes the snap. It goes to Barraza off the left side, and there goes Trenton Barraza. And if he didn't get a first down, he's real close. And this is decision time for Coach Schaefer. Do you try to maintain possession, or do you punt it and pin him back? And they're going to say fourth and two, a little bit farther than I thought. And, Mark, I think they're going to go for it from the 44-yard line. I believe Coach has enough faith in that offensive line that he's going to go for it. So, 8 0 Bays, Moody, Lathrop, Meyer, Johnson, the tight end, Basinger. Best is in the gun. They'll take the snap. He's going to give it up to the first man, and they're going to pick up a Dale's concrete first down. And there you see Josh Gannon come back in and pick up two tough yards for the Bulldogs. You know, when you've got a good back like that, and you can also use Barraza as a decoy, and behind that offensive line, that was a really good play call. And that's when Coach Schaefer just yeah. says to the offensive line, go out and get us, boys. That's, that's leaning heavy on those kids. You've already had the football for two minutes on this drive. You're going to get three or four more downs right here. So the clock continues to run, 7.28 here. Grove leads 21-7. to seven. Best is in the gun. He's going to keep it himself oh. and go off the right side. And he's going to pick up about seven yards and a nice job there by Landon Best as he goes through the middle of that line and uh, picks up a big chunk of yards. I'll tell you else who had a good play that time was the tight end. Brady Basinger got a good kick out block and freed him up to get inside the 35 yard line. I like Brady Basinger. He's a nice player. He's done a lot of good things. Yes. He has. You know what? It says freshman beside his name, too. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I know that. Here's Best as he goes Trenton Barraza off the left side. And Barraza oh. doing a little shake and bake there. Yeah. And uh, Carrillo. Carrillo did a good job defensively, just kind of hemming him in. And that Lipsick defense has been on the field a long time. Oh, that there. would be correct. And that's going to bring up a close to a first down, about a, let's see, third yeah. and one from the 30-yard line. Clock continues to run. 6.25 and rolling. If this all holds out, Mark, it'll be Lipsick's first loss on the year. They'll fall to 6-1 and 3-1 and and in the Northwest Conference. And not only that, Mark, if this continues, Columbus Grove goes to 4-0 in the Northwest Conference. This is best. 
Hands the ball up to the first man. That's number 44, Josh Gannon. And Josh Gannon picks up another Dale's Concrete first down. Of course, Columbus Grove and Crestview are playing tonight, too. The other teams that were at the top of the conference. Bluffton. Bluffton and Crestview. Bluffton, I'm sorry. <laughs> Columbus Grove's here. Yeah, Columbus Grove's here. Yeah, I was... Looking at the word Columbus yes, Grove, and I'm it. also <laughs> headed to my phone trying to figure out if we could get a score on that game. <laughs> it was Bluffton 7, Crestview nothing at halftime. That's Obviously, a, we're well past that. That's so. a dandy of a game. So here's Best in the gun, first and 10 from the 28. Taking all the time he can off the play clock. Here go Josh Gannon. Uh -oh. Josh Gannon fumbles, and oh. Lipsing picks it up in a huge play yes, for the Lipsing Vikings. Just when you thought it was over, Josh Gannon coughs the ball up, and the Lipsing Vikings, Johnny on the spot. Stripped it loose from the, from the back, and here Lipsick has life with 5.27 to go. Grove had had the football for four minutes and had a first down, and that's their first turnover of the game. And that is their first turnover, and the crowd really, Mark, it's almost like someone breathed some life into yeah. them as they jump to their feet, as they understand this high-powered offense has got a shot to close the gap on the Bulldogs. That's correct. So here's Ty Lommers in the gun. He's got Esteban Carrillo off. He's going to look across the field. He's under heavy pressure. Oh, He's going who. down, going down oh, again. Ball's loose. Ball is loose and picked up by 62, Kyle Lathrop. The hit initially was made by number 52, Kylan Mays, and Johnny on the spot. They pick up another touchdown. Just when you thought Lipsick was back in the football game, a huge defensive play, the strip, the scoop and score. That young man, who happens to wear 62, has had a wonderful evening. <laughs> He's at the game of course, his, his life. <laughs> teammate, uh, Kylan May, set that up, too. Uh, who else would you figure on picking up that loose fumble? The number 62, Kyle Lathrop. So here comes Evan Vierhoff to tack on another extra point. Snap his back, hold his good, and kick his up, and it is good. With 5.19 to go until this one's called. Grove Bulldogs lead 28 to 7. We'll be back right after these messages. Back here at Lipsy High School, and uh, Mark, uh, we thought Lipsy oh had an opportunity there in the first play after they recovered the fumble. They coughed the ball up. Grove picks it up for a scoop and score. How good has the defense been for Columbus Grove? You know, they had the, the, the one drive early that they gave up to Lipsick, and since that time, you know, it was 14 0, then it was 14 7, and Grove's defense has been lights out. They absolutely have. So there's a little squib kick down the middle of the field. It'll be picked up at about the 20-yard line. And they will be hit by a host of Bulldogs at about the 35-yard line. So about a 14-yard gain for the Vikings. That's where they'll take over with 5.13 to go. So yeah. the uh, NWC, Mark, as you said, here well, in the next few weeks, the big boys are going to be playing each other. Yeah, Bluffton, we, I just, just got the update from Ryan Shadowell. Bluffton's up 14 to nothing on Crestview in the third. That game is still uh, in doubt, but Bluffton's playing very well. They're undefeated, too, coming into tonight. So 5-13 to go here. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. Lommers is in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off to number two. And that is Mason Raider. The clock continues to run. We are now under the five-minute mark. The WSN app, my man. It's my, one of my favorite right. things, you know. I'm on that thing. I know. <laughs> Friday nights at football games, and every morning, one of the things I do is hop up and look and see what the scores were for the night before <laughs> in every sport around. They bring up second and eight from the 37, 440 to go. Lommer's in the gun. He takes the snap, looks across the field, throws off to the right, and he's got Trent Seifker out there who toe taps the sidelines, goes out of bounds, tried to turn it up for a gain, but a nice pitch and catch there to Seifker. Kind of showed you the arm strength. He threw that ball all the way to the sideline from the left side of the formation that time. Good arm strength to get it out there. Not an easy throw for no, anybody not at, at all. any level. That's right. First down to 47. Clock stops when the man goes out of bounds. 
4.34 to go. First and 10 from the 47. Another Dale's concrete first down. And there you see Seeker with a little pitch and catch. And now Groves in just a little bit of a prevent yeah. defense. They're going to let the guys catch it in front of them, obviously, because they want to keep that clock running. And, you know, they're able to get pressure with four guys up front, and that allows them to drop seven into, into coverage as well. Just a couple-yard pickup on the quick out. And it doesn't matter what level you're at, Mark. Yeah. If you can get pressure oh. with four-man fronts, you're really going to have some success on the defensive end. So here's Lommers, second and four from the 47. And they'll go right back up the middle. And a nice job by Mason Raider. And he picks up another Dale's Concrete first down. And umpire Jim Epperly went down that time, was able to hop up. First down. Blitzcone ran right by it. Another nice pickup there of about six yards, five, six yards there on the carry. Good play call. Grove had been rushing just four. They brought extra that time. And with the run play call, they were able to get past the initial uh, wave. Mark, they went with Mason Raider quite a bit yeah. here the last couple possessions. And you just wonder if Esteban Carrillo, who's not on the field, I do not see him. I'll look, I'll look for him on the sideline after this play, the, yeah. yeah. They'll go to the right side. They'll go Trent Seifger, and he's taken down at about the 30-yard line. The clock continues to run. Quick out. I'm looking along the sideline here. I have not seen him anywhere. I just I hope that young man is okay. We haven't yeah. seen him on the field in a while. He's such a huge part of that offense. That was a four-yard completion. Make it. They're going to save. Chains have not moved. I, I thought there it was they first go. Down. Yeah, there I was looking at yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Once again, they didn't get them set. They did before not get they, the chain yeah. set. Now they're going to have to confer with the officials because I don't think they've got the right marking there. But On the bottom of the pile, guess who made the tackle? Somebody <laughs> named Kyle Lathrop. <laughs> surprise, surprise, yes, surprise. That young man has really had a football game this evening. Now the board says fourth and one. Now they're going to say first and ten, but it's second down on the marker yeah. board. So a little bit of confusion here. I'm going to go a second down and about seven. Lommers looks off to the left. He's under pressure. He's going to keep it himself. He gets to the left side, and he's taken down by Zach Reynolds on the hit. I, I think that Latham is down. He went up to try to jump and block a pass, and it got under. That's not Latham. Excuse me. That's 52. Like Kylan May Mays. He went up trying to block a pass and got undercut, and he fell hard. He did, and he's going to take some time off here with 2.28 to go in the fourth quarter. Grove leads 28 to nothing. Danny Holbrook, Mark Shine, homecoming 2023 from Lipsick High School, a key Northwest Conference matchup, and so far so good for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. I think that's one of those where you get the wind knocked out of you, just kind of right. shake you up a little yeah. bit. I think he'll be back if they need him. So Lommer's in the gun. He's flanked off to the right by Raider. He's going to give the ball to Mason Raider as he goes to the middle and picks up about a yard and a half, two yards. Clock continues to run, 2.05 and counting. Right at the 20, uh, 21, I guess. That'll bring up fourth and three, Mark, from the 21 yard line. So a big fourth down play. Want to score, maybe? Go onside kick. Lommers takes the snap, looks across the right side. He throws it out there. He's got Schrader at the 20. Schrader tries to pick oh. up the yards. And, and I just, don't know if he got it or not, Mark. Just he lowered did. his shoulder and blasted forward. And they'll have to, yep, they're going to say he picked up a first down. So another Dale's concrete first down. So you know, he's, he's one of those guys that's 5'9", listed at 158, and he plays a whole lot bigger say, than that. He plays like he's 250. <laughs> he goes right at you. Ball's at the 16-yard line on what will be the 11th play of this drive. First and 10 from the 16-yard line, minute 35 to go. Lommers is in the gun. Raiders step up and makes a block, and he's under heavy pressure. He goes across the middle and almost picked off. There you saw Trevin Baxter, the 5'11 sophomore, who's had a heck of a game tonight, and he almost picks it off there in the end zone. Those defensive backs really rally the football well, don't they, they do. Danny? They do. They are really ball hawks back there, and they are a huge part of the success of this Grove defense. And, Mark, I'm going to tell you, Columbus Grove has two losses on the year. Yeah. 
But I can promise you this, those teams that got them early, uh, right. you know, this is a, one of those teams that gets better as the year goes well, on. Well, you mentioned the fact they graduated people from a year ago, and so they yes. were the first part of the sure. season, they were assimilating guys in, and they got it going now. Second and 10 from the 16. Lommers throws to the left side. He's got Seifger out there. Seifger takes it back to the middle of the field. Tries to push it in and gets it in for a touchdown. Trent Seifger with a pitch and catch from Lommers. And he makes the score 28-13. Seifger made a nice run on that. Caught the ball and it just, just jetted up the middle. Grove couldn't get to him to put a hit on him. So Trent Seifger scores a big touchdown for the Vikings. That puts them within two scores here as they try to tack on the extra point. Quinn Schrader out of the hold of Trent Seifker. Snap is back. The hold is good, and the kick is up, and it is good. So with 1.22 to go in the fourth quarter, the Bulldogs lead the Lipsy Vikings. Conclusion of this one right after these messages. score, but boy, they took a lot of time 3.57 to went off the clock, Danny. They ran 12 plays, go those 65 yards. But Grove did a good job of not giving up the quick strike. Grove's got the good hand teams up there as they go onside. And a up and under kick and a nice job there by number 44 for the dogs, Josh Gannon. The tailback does a great job of just corralling the ball. Lipsick's got all three timeouts left. Let's see how Coach Kirkendall chooses to play this as the Grove's going to get the ball on their own 49-yard line. you got to believe a couple first downs here. Yeah. I, I can't I'm, imagine I'm, I'm them curious if, the ball. I'm curious yeah. if Lipsick will stop the clock. You know, they're down, down two, two scores scores, right. at 121. Let's see how they choose to play this here. Best is in the gun. And there's flag. a flag yep. comes out immediately, and Trenton Barraza goes off to the left side, and he'll be taken down for a gain of about three, four yards. But let's see what the looks like maybe a false start. I thought there was movement on the Columbus Grove side. We've not had a lot of penalties this evening. Two pretty disciplined teams tonight, and there's a movement penalty. That's exactly what we thought we saw. Although, if you're Columbus Grove, you say, yeah, we just took seven seconds off the clock That's and it's still first down. That's exactly what I was thinking. They are pushed back, but it doesn't matter right now when the clock continues to run at 114. I want to thank all our sponsors tonight, Hawker Drywall and Plastering, Dale's Concrete, and the Union Bank. Proud sponsors here at WSN. Can't do the job without those folks, Mark, and they come yeah. through each and every week. We, we really appreciate all of our sponsorship, and you can call 339-4444 if you'd like to be a part of our telecast, be it football or volleyball, soccer right now, or into the wintertime, of course. We're putting together our broadcast schedule for basketball and wrestling and swimming right now, as a matter of fact. And what do we got? Columbus Grove timeout. Columbus Grove timeout. So, Mark, we take a look at the uh, – the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, like I said earlier, they'll go to 4-0 and yeah. and 5-2 and overall. Lipsing takes the first loss of the year. And if you're Coach Kirkendall, what do you tell your kids after a big loss like this? Now, you're still in the race yeah. for the Northwest Conference. There, there's two things that, that go with that. There's four teams at the top of the conference, and one loss can certainly give you a, a tie and perhaps a chance even to win this thing outright the way these teams are going to match up with each other over the last three weeks of the season. And the other thing is, you know, let's get to 8-2. Let's get to 9-1. and one. Let's go into the playoffs and do some damage. Let, let, let's get healthy. Let's keep getting better and, and improve as the season goes along. Take this game, watch the film of it, and then let's come back on Monday and go to work again. And, Mark, you look at Columbus Grove's schedule, and, look, they don't shy away from anybody. No. That's a killer non-conference schedule it is. with Liberty Benton and Patrick Henry. Uh, I mean, those are big-time programs. Yep, absolutely. And I, I talked to Coach Schaefer just briefly on the field. He said just exactly what you said, Danny. So here we go at first and 15 from the 44. Trenton Barraza goes off the right side. Not much doing over there, but they're going to keep the clock running. Yeah. And uh, Lipsick Lipsick will. Yep. forced to take a timeout. They've got two left. 
Well, Danny, that took all of one second off the clock. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Barraza went down quickly. I, I wasn't sure he went down quite that quickly. You know, Mark, uh, last week I was in Notre Dame Stadium, and I yeah. watched the Buckeyes with three seconds to go. Yeah. They scored a touchdown and only ran two seconds off that the was, clock. I, that, that was amazing. Was, <laughs> it was amazing how fast they got into the end zone on that particular yeah. play. and. Yeah, the, the scorekeeper in Notre Dame has a quick finger. I oh, gotta be well, honest. Well, we got, the officials caught it. Uh, Carl Schlegel and his crew caught it, and they ran some more time off the clock. They yes, said the they play did. actually took four seconds, so yes, they did. that's probably a little bit more accurate. And yeah. officials have that right, Danny. And in, I think I know they do in basketball and in football if they think the clock, uh, and they have evidence that the yeah. clock did not uh, operate properly. They have they an opportunity that, to change yeah. it. And um, you know, congratulations, Art. You know, all these people who make football games go, scorekeepers and, and time clock guys and, and stat guys and down chain crew and all those people, who, you know, ticket takers, popcorn people. It, it takes so many people to put a good football program on, and they do that here at Lipsick. Absolutely. And at Columbus Grove. And it's a beautiful facility here. It is. Beautiful I, green grass and nice. Uh, yeah. Been treated very well. Over I was talking to Megan Sherrick, our camera person, earlier today. The last time I was here, this was a wooden press box, and they have done this brand-new beautiful it's press really box nice. in the last few years. And a lot of good things here at Lipsick School with the remodeling of the school building and all the new construction that took place. This is a wonderful facility right now, not just football-wise, but academically and athletically. Athletically. So that'll bring up second and 14 from the 45 as Grove continues to try to run the clock off. I got to believe here that uh, they'll take another timeout if they can keep him from a first down. Best hands the ball off to the first man up. That's number 44. That is Josh Gannon. Glipsic will take another timeout. The WSN Score app is new and improved. Download the brand new app from your app store so you don't miss any of your favorite team scores. The new WSN app replaces the old app, so make sure you download it today and stay up to date with all your scores. And that is your favorite app. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> First of all, I thought it was a nap. It, and I, I'm really, really good at naps. <laughs> yeah, but it's an app, but it's, 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 an a, app. it's really, really good. Well, you know, Danny, there's so much going on right now. WSN's got uh, volleyball on Sunday nights now. We're going to be at Crestview yep. on Saturday. Big that, invitational. Yeah, there, yeah, big invitational. You know, Crestview night volleyball has been really, really good. In 22 years, they have never won their own tournament. Really? And this year, they are ranked very high in the state. They have some really good teams coming in, as they always do. And it'll be interesting to see if they can win their own tournament. All this football we got going on as we head into week 8, 9, and 10 coming up. Then the playoffs. It is. It, so many good things. we got soccer going on. The tournament draws in soccer and in volleyball are a week from Sunday. And about three weeks, they start high school yes, basketball sir. practice. <laughs> so here come the Bulldogs. This is Barraza, as he's just going to take and go down pretty easy there. They keep the clock running, yeah. and that will be Lipsick's last timeout. TV 44 and WSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click Donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit WTLW.com. Next Friday night, Danny, I will be down in Wapak as they yes. battle the Elida Bulldogs. Where do you head next week? I believe I'm down in New Bremen next week. Oh. Yeah, I believe that's where I'm at. New Bremen got, the their, got their quarterback back last yeah. week. And uh, that, that's a team that can be dangerous. when, when uh, they're, they're, There are so many good quarterbacks in the MAC this year. Uh, we, we've talked about it a few times. You know, who's going to be the, the number, first string quarterback when they select all league? There'll, there'll be some guys who won't get it picked at all, and they won't, not even second or third team, and they're good enough to be first team in a lot of well, other conferences. I, so. I don't know if you know this, but uh, Marion Local lost a really good quarterback last year, yeah. and they didn't miss a beat. They, <laughs> and, and actually, you know, I, I talked to Coach Goodwin's uh, dad, Bill, in the summer. They were trying to decide whether it should be Kyle Lotti or Justin Knopf, and Justin Knopf has, proved, has had a He's dynamic year. But so many good quarterbacks. Here's a punt coming up. Here's the punt with 58 seconds to go. Kick it out of bounds? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Right That's down a, on the left side. It's going oh, to be fielded by about that. He didn't quite get it out of bounds, Schrader did he? gets an opportunity to field the ball. And he's going to go up their sideline. Oh, lines. boy. He's got blockers out in front of him. He cuts Look up out. the middle. Here goes Clean Schrader. As he goes up the sidelines. He tries to break it, and he's going to be taken down. Breck, three. You're right. I'm sorry. It was Jace Brecht. I thought. I'm thinking Quinn Schrader yeah. all night, and it's Jace Brecht, and a nice job by that young man. Well, you know what? They're in a situation with 39 seconds to go. 
Very improbable. Hit a home run ball right here and, and go onside kick. They're, they're still got a chance. No That's, timeouts left. Yep. 39 seconds to go. How about that kick off, uh, kick punt return right there up the sideline? First of all, I thought it was going to go out of bounds. He didn't get quite far enough, and he was able to snag it right on the sideline. So here comes Lommers and the Vikings as they try to tighten this one up. Lommers is in the gun. He takes the snap, looks across the field, throws in the middle, and it's picked off. Oh. Picked off by number 57, Loudon Ockmoody, and that will do it. With no timeouts left, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs just take a knee here, Mark. There's another turnover for a team that had not turned the football over all year. You know, Ty Lommers had not thrown an INT on the season. Just threw one right there. Could have had one earlier, had a penalty called, but uh, that young man is a really, really good quarterback. And just a junior for, that he is as well, but the Columbus Grove defense has been good this evening. So with 34 seconds to go, they will just take a knee here from the about the 10 yard line. As he'll go under center for the first time tonight and he'll take the knee. So the Columbus Grove Bulldogs have come into Viking territory and will knock them out from the ranks of the unbeaten. They will fall to six and one overall and three and one in the Northwest Conference. Columbus Grove rises to five and two and stays undefeated in the Northwest Conference. Mark, your thoughts on the game tonight? Well, I, th I thought the thing was the, the patience and the uh, ball uh, ability to take care of the football by Columbus Grove to move the football, to get first downs, have long drives, and put those 28 points up on the board. And then I thought their defense has been very, very good throughout the evening. They gave a team that was averaging 35 points a game. They gave them 14 this evening, and they played very, very well tonight. And the defense scored a touchdown for them for Columbus Grove as well. So that'll do it. The final from Livson High School, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs win this one 28-14. Mark Shine, our entire crew, I'm Danny Holbrook saying we'll see you next week.